Well, I'm a naturopathic physician. I graduated from Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. The whole idea behind naturopathic medicine is first do no harm. One thing that really attracted me to this place was uh, the therapeutic value of the forest. And it's based on all the essential oils that are floating around in the forest, the pine scent that you smell. It's just a terrific place to come and relax. And you do feel very calm when you're here and it's very nourishing. It's, it's a wonderful medicine. People that understand it benefit greatly from it. It's one of my favorite things I got to, to do because I felt like I got treated at the same time as I was treating my patients. When Rick and Julie came to Bobcat Company, they actually stopped into a dealership and were just asking to borrow some equipment for some projects that they had, wondering if we'd be willing to just donate the equipment for like a couple weeks for them to do some food plots. Their whole pitch was on conservation and the, instead of just focusing on a hunt and killing the animal and stuff, they're focused on everything from putting in the food plots to maintaining the land, managing their herd, and giving back to the community. We really liked that message at Bobcat, and we thought from the pitches that we'd heard, that was the best fit for us if we wanted to get involved in the outdoor world. Four years into it, we started talking about, like, you know, we have to do something to make this more legit. We're sitting there one day, and I'm like, what if we could just, like, ask somebody that needs help, find somebody with a lot of really crazy, outrageous projects that are really cool, that we could use a ton of our equipment on and just go out there and do this big event. And um, at the end of the day, they walk away with a really great project and we walk away with a great show that it shows how Bo Bobcat and Beyond the Hunt mesh. Day one, it's on. <laughs> Create and conserve. 2015, here we go. It's absolutely beautiful here. The weather was perfect. Everybody knew what they were supposed to be doing. And we just, we got off to a great start. The plan is to reroute this, a natural spring that's up this hill into this pond and we want it to be able to actually hold the water that we divert to it. So uh, we need to bring it down at least to five feet deep and just clean it out a little bit. One of the many projects here on the piece of ground that we're working on here in Idaho is this kind of intricate trail system built on the property so the kids can get around to all different parts of the property. This afternoon, Jason is in the forestry machine and he's actually cutting trails on the top that will go up into uh, public land that's actually even above this yet. Rob has been on the excavator and he's cleared out a spot for the redneck blind to sit up so that when John and the kids come out they can sit up above and, and watch the wildlife down below come in. That's probably the most, most lengthy part of this project is all the different trails from the bottom part of this property up to the top and several kind of that cross cut this, this thing in between. Cleaned out the pond, we uh, did some erosion control, we started to clear up some trails, we pulled a bunch of old fencing that was here and just made a huge dent in the project list. And we actually were thinking, wow, we'll be wrapping up by early Wednesday morning. And then, then Tuesday came and so did the rain. We have been hindered just a little bit this morning on our start time because of the rain. We've been working in a lot of mud, which is great for the Bobcat machines, but it's honestly, it's slowing our personnel down just a little bit. A slow start, but nonetheless, we're back at it. Day three, really kind of looking at the finality of what we've got left. We got the erosion control mats in place on our slopes that we had um, fixed up, got it all seeded. We got the conservation plots all tilled up and ready to plant. We transplanted a whole bunch of trees from up top on the, on the mountain down by the river to prevent the banks from falling way down there. 
Well, we are on the tail end of Crate and Conserve 2015 here in Idaho, and a lot of work has been done. I think, I think we figured up 20 people, 10 machines, uh, and I don't know how many projects. I think we last counted five different culverts. Over three miles of groomed trails that we've put on the property so he can get the kids around in a utility vehicle so they can enjoy it all. Two food plots. We've transplanted almost 15 trees. You know, all in all, it's been a great project. And so now here rolling into day four, we our project list is small. We have a few trees to transplant with the digger. We have a few food plots to plant. Honestly, I feel that uh, it's a great fit. We have a light footprint, it's small, we can come in. A lot of the projects this week um, occurred in standing timber forests. And you can't just bring a, a big piece of equipment in there and not leave a big mark on the world. We can wiggle our stuff in there, maneuver it in, and make it fit really well. Leave a very minimal footprint on it and still accomplish the project that we're trying to succeed with, you know. And so, whether it's going down and putting a conservation plot in or helping out um, a pond that needs to be cleaned out or even just preventing some erosion. We can go into a natural space like this, do the project and walk away and within a few months nobody will know that we're even here. So glad uh, Rick and, and Julie and, and, and the Bobcat company got together on this because it's just a tremendous combination. Um, it's, it's been fun. We have the ability to come out here and show people that, you know, not only can we do construction sites that you see in the urban site, but also in the rural site too. And it's very easy to use this equipment. If landowners wanted to rent a piece of equipment, it's, it's not too difficult to be able to learn how to run a piece of our equipment. It's been a great time for us here, uh, and I can't wait until 2016, until the next one. Remember, you cannot win if you don't enter. Create and conserve 2015. It's a wrap.